Thank you. It is 6 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, March 9th, in a card order of the Mercedes Ind Independent School Districts uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, myself, Mr. Martinez, Mr. Gal, Mr. Vino, Mr. Garza, and Mr. Howe, and Ms. Uh, Mendiola. There will be no action taken by the Board of Trustees during this uh, workshop. We have uh, public comment. Ms. Martin, do you have anybody? Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, let me go ahead and add this. Really, let me read this out loud, please. The next item on the agenda is open forum or public comment. Before we begin, I will remind our audience members of the board's procedures for handling public comment. The public comment portion of our meeting is available to members of the public who wish to address an agenda item to be considered by the board on tonight's agenda. Anyone who wants to speak during public comment must sign in prior to the start of the meeting and list the agenda item they want to discuss. Each public comment speaker will be allowed a maximum of five minutes to address the board. However, any public tes uh, testimony speaker who requires a translator will receive up to 10 minutes to address the board. The public comment portion of the meeting will allow all speakers who are, have signed up before the start of the meeting to address the board regarding an item on tonight's agenda. Please keep your comments or criticisms civil and courteous. Please also avoid using profanity and refrain from making personal attacks on others during your opportunity to speak. Last, we ask you do not discuss students who are not your own child. If a speaker is seeking board resolution for, of a specific complaint, that concern should be addressed through the district's grievance process. District policy, DGBA, has been established for addressing employee complaints. Policy FNG is the avenue for filing parent uh, complaints and our policy GF addresses community members' complaints. Grievance forms can be obtained at any campus administration office or in the central administration offices. Thank you. And our first speaker is? Our first speaker is Ms. Elvia Sandoval. Ms. Sandoval. Agenda item A and B. Welcome, Ms. Sandoval. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Board President, Board Members, and Superintendent Mrs. Mendiola. My name is Elvia Sandoval, and I'm here this evening as a concerned taxpayer in this community and as a voice for all students at Mercedes ISD. I believe that all students matter and that all students are deserving. During your regular board meeting on February the 15, 2022, it was perceived through your discussion to some students, parents, and the public present at that meeting that you seem to be concerned about only 375 students rather than the whole student body of this district. The item on the agenda to move the early college from Mercedes High School was approved regardless of who was affected or how much it cost to make the move. My understanding is that the early college was moved to a much safer, newer, and nicer building with all the facilities needed to the stu for the students and staff. Let me make it clear. I also believe the early college students are deserving but I do not understand why as a team of eight, you didn't work on a plan that would benefit all students and it would not affect the budget. According to the board president, there is sufficient funding for the move. Then why didn't we taxpayers see the plan to show us how much it would cost the district? It was not until an article in the monitor that we taxpayers were informed about how much more or less the cost will be to make the move. The following is the, state, the estimated cost. $1,203,373.80, not including all specifics such as follows. $445,169.97 for the movement of the culinary kitchen. $104,070 for a food service manager and three food specialists. $371,197 for tuition. $114,190 for a yearly transportation. $110,875 for five additional bus drivers, $3,315 for fuel, the shuttles between the new site and the Mercedes High School, $134,150 in facilities, expenses, and undetermined costs to repair administration, buildings, for services like human resources, special education, and administration, $2,123,189, 
$123,989.58 for reoccurring costs of tuition, utilities, and staffing for that campus. Total estimate cost is $5,990,947.12. Are you absolutely sure that the budget will not be affected and that the fund balance will remain the same? If your answer is yes, then I encourage you as a team of eight to plan a walkthrough during school hours to all the schools and see for yourselves if all students have the accommodations they deserve. Begin with Taylor Elementary, which is one of the oldest schools and could really use a facelift for a brand new school. Go to Harold Middle School and see if the students there deserve a gym, a band hall, or more classrooms. Visit Kennedy Elementary during their lunchtime to feel the heat in their cafeteria. Walk through the halls of Travis Elementary and Nahos Elementary and determine whether the central air system is cool in all areas. See if Chacon Middle School and Mercedes High School need a bigger cafeteria or roofing repairs. <coughs> Consider the status of the Mercedes Alternative Academy. Make absolutely sure <coughs> that, the student, that the special ed students have all the necessities and find out where the sewer stench is coming from at the early childhood building. Childhood building. Before you finalize the move, Ask yourselves, are not all students deserving of better accommodations? And if your answer is no, then go ahead and spend the, the almost $6 million on a move for 375 students and let the other 3,915 students continue as they are. But as a board who believes students deserve better accommodations, why don't you come up with a plan that all schools receive a portion of the almost $6 million and that way, all students at Mercedes ISD will receive the accommodation, accommodations they deserve. I do not have <coughs> excuse me, an issue with moving the early college if the funds are there. But I do, I do have a concern that not all Mercedes ISD students are being considered to be deserving. It was repeated adamantly several times that 375 students deserve it. What about the other 3,915 students? Do they deserve it also? During this inflation period, who knows how much prices will continue to rise and hurt the budget. For example, as of today, gasoline is $3.99 a gallon in our area and up to $7 a gallon in other areas. So you must work together to make sure Mercedes ISD does not go in the red. Please take the time to research all avenues and keep Mercedes ISD financially stable so that the ta our taxes are not raised for our taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Next, we have Mr. Don Welcome, Mr. Rogue. Yes, sir. Good evening, board and Dr. Mendiola. I come to before you as a concerned member of the taxpayer of the district and um, and an ex-board member. And I know that you all have been through this and we've had challenges before, but is this move that you wanted to make, has it been budgeted? Is it in the current budget? Is any of it in the current budget? Has there been any allocations? The, what it was approved for in the last meeting was just the, the relocation of early college, but it doesn't have the relocation of early college, the early college is moved, but didn't take into consideration other things that were involved in this. You have that you got to bus the students back and forth. We're currently, they're at the campus, they don't have to be bused for, for athletic activities or for band and other functions. So they're all there at the same place. So I don't think that the budget is, is there to support that. And, and I'm sure that the, that the transportation budget doesn't have it. There's not, um, like Elvia mentioned, fuel prices. Diesel prices are hitting $5 a gallon, and we don't know where they're gonna stop. It might be six, seven, eight dollars a gallon, what they're forecasting it might be, and so why, why spend the money to move the students? Number two, where are you gonna find the bus drivers? How many bus drivers are we short right now? I'm sure, I know I go up and down the expressway and see other schools advertising bus drivers, bus drivers. And we're, so I'm sure we're looking for bus drivers. You look at the budget for, you're gonna be looking at the budget pretty soon for the 22, 23 school year. 
is this taken in consideration the loss of students that we've had this past year and are those going to come back next year so here how's this this is affecting our ada so that's going to affect how much money the district is receiving have you taken into consideration the budget amount for the relocation and transfer of all the staff that's here the students that are in the culinary arts program which has done an outstanding job and they got all the facilities here where are you going to put them you don't have a place to put them unless you build something new so they're not going to be treated fairly uh, you got where are you going to put all the central office staff here you got this facility has been set up already for this leave it the way it is uh, you got and you want to say well it was you know they deserve it they deserve it they deserve it well other students deserve it too Harold unfortunately when we built that school it was for elementary and it wasn't built for middle school it was made into a middle school now so you don't have a gym you don't have a band hall so here you're busting all these kids back and forth so you're spending money there so you know if we don't start saving some money and cutting some cost we're going to be in worse financial shape than we are right now because with this fuel cost basically and by the next school year it's going to be easy double if not maybe three times as much as what we're paying what we were paying at the beginning of this school year which is horrible the so all these moves going back and forth and this was made bam bam one board member made the motion and the second and the second was done by another board member bang bang without any discussion yes that technically that's the way it's supposed to be done but when i was on the school board we had a lot of discussions prior to making a but prior to making a uh, making a decision making a motion which maybe we're out of maybe we were out of order but our attorney never said anything about that we were we were um, doing anything wrong if this all this money came out or the amount of expense that we're looking at for next year's budget and the increase to come up with that money somebody's going to have to borrow some money or they're going to have to raise the taxes and i'm sure the members of the city aren't going to appreciate having a tax increase and because that's that's an unusual uh, extraordinary deal and and then the, you look at the uh it's it's like a analogy you drop a a pebble in the water what happens it starts out as a small ring and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger here we make this one change but it's going to require a minimum of three maybe four or five changes after that so thank you all appreciate it and and good luck in making this thing fly and be fair to everybody thank you mr Rubel. okay moving along with the uh, Business Office and Superintendent, a 2021-2022 budget update presented by Dele Garcia, CFO. Ms. Mignola. Good evening, Mr. Board President, uh, board members, community, and staff. We have Ms. Delia Garcia, who will be presenting information on our current budget and our financial forecast. Good evening, Ms. Mr. Board President, Trustees, Superintendent Mendiola, and community. Uh, my name is Deli Garcia and I want to express my gratitude for allowing me to serve the district as CFO. I will begin the presentation on the 2021-2022 budget workshop and financial forecast. The enrollment five-year trend shows enrollment for the last five years as of the PEAM snapshot date. In 2017-2018, the district's enrollment was at 5,530. In the next year, there was a 4.6 decrease of five, 255 students. The next two years, enrollment decreased by an additional 334 students and 260 students, which was 6.3 and 5.3 decline in enrollment. In October 2021, the district's enrollment decreased by another 5.6%, declining by 263 to 4,418. 
a total decline of 1,112 students. On average, the enrollment has decreased by 5% yearly. <clears throat> At the end of the line graph, you will see the estimated amount of revenue that has been lost by the district in the last five years, which is approximately 6.7 million. Slide three shows a decline in enrollment by student group. In the last five years, the high school grade span declined by 115 students, representing 10% of the decline in enrollment. The middle school students declined by 191, which represents 17% of the decline in enrollment. And the elementary group declined by the greatest amount with 806 fewer students, which represents 73% of the decline in enrollment. So clearly we're losing our students at the elementary level. Now, if the district's enrollment continues to decline by 5%, this line graph shows what the enrollment and the ADA for the district will look like in the next three years. If the district continues to lose 200 students each year, roughly 5%, in 2024-2025, the enrollment would be 3,678 which would be an additional decrease in revenue of 3.7 million. Average daily attendance. This is a line graph of the average daily attendance, which reflects a similar pattern to the enrollment trend. The COVID variant has been contributing to the low student attendance in the current fiscal year. In the last five years, there has been a decline of 1,146 in ADA. State funding is generated by ADA, so it is important for our campuses to call and try to increase attendance when students are absent. Are there any questions so far? Mm -hmm. In the next board meeting, a budget amendment will be presented to realign the budget to new revenue estimates based on 3,000 862 average daily attendance. The state foundation program revenue it will now be projected at $37.5 million. Adjustments will be made to special populations and the regular program allotment will need to be decreased by an additional $650,000. We had already done uh, one amendment in October where we decreased um, by 1.7 million our foundation revenue already. Another area that will, may see a decrease in revenue is indirect costs for grant programs. There has been a time lag in spending which impacts the amount of indirect costs that can be charged to the grant. Altogether, it is projected that $1 million will need to be cut from the budget. However, if student attendance declines further, additional cuts may be necessary. Here is the general operating fund balance for the last four years. The number of days represent the number of days in unassigned fund balance. It excludes child nutrition fund balance and fund balance restricted for inventory. At the end of August 31st, 2021, the district had 11.4 million in general operating fund balance, of which 10.8 million was unassigned. The district has approximately 44.5 days in unassigned fund balance. In the next slide, we have the breakdown of all the fund balances the district has. The, the general operating fund has a total of 11.4 million, 272,000 are in inventory, and 330,000 are for child nutrition. Special Education Co-op has 27000 and the Debt Service Fund has $305,000. On the right-hand side are the fund balances for workers' compensation, unemployment, and health insurance. There is a total of $1.5 million in internal service fund balance. The health insurance fund balance, I'd like to mention, had uh, 893000 at the end of August 31st, 2021. Now we will take a closer look at the health insurance fund. 
The district began the self-budget health insurance fund in 2017-2018. And at the end of the year, the district had 862,000 in fund balance. In the following year, the fund balance decreased slightly to 731,000. And in 2019-2020, when COVID began, the fund balance decreased, increased by 602,000. And this was due to the reduced utilization due to the lockdown and the lack of availability of elective procedures. But then in 2020-2021, utilization began to increase and the fund balance went down by 440,000. At the end of February 2022, in the current fiscal year, the fund balance has already decreased by an additional 393,000. And with the COVID variant, claims continue to increase at a rate that is greater than our monthly premium contributions to the fund. Currently, there is $500,000 in fund balance and an average monthly cost in health insurance is 500,000. So we're running on a month to month basis with our health insurance fund. COVID-19 has had a significant impact to the health insurance fund. Health insurance costs are rapidly increasing due to the pandemic. Vaccines, testing, treatment, and hospitalization have contributed to the high utilization of the fund. In 2020, 365,000 was spent just for COVID-19 treatment. In 2021, that cost was 624,000 and in the month of January 2022, it was 55,000. It is important to note that local funding will need to cover these rising costs once, once the health insurance fund balance is exhausted. At the moment, we are seeking approval and looking for funds in the ESSER grants to absorb a portion of this cost and help the fund. So as you can see that the, at the right hand column, a million dollars has been spent uh, for COVID treatment. COVID leave. Okay. On September 2021, the board signed a resolution to provide an additional seven days of COVID-19 sick leave for the current school year. A total of 176 employees have taken COVID leave. Staff has been out for 940 days, costing $212,000 as of January 2022. Currently, 147,000 in local funds have been used for COVID leave and 64,000 in grant funds have been used. We are also seeking approval and looking for funds in the ESSER grants to absorb a portion of this cost as well and to shift the cost to the grants. Administration is exploring all the options available to safeguard general operating fund balance because challenging times are coming ahead. Now I will discuss the Child Nutrition Fund. Enrollment and COVID have also had a negative, negative impact in the funding for Child Nutrition Program. In the last couple of years, the fund balance for the CNS department has been depleted to less than a month of operations. The Child Nutrition Department should be self-sustaining. However, low participation, the Virtual Learning Academy, and remote conferencing have affected the number of meals served. In 2017-2018, the department generated 4.6 million in revenue. But in 2020-2021, it only generated 3.2 million. The department is operating with 68% of the revenue it has had in previous years, a loss of $1.4 million. At the moment, the CNS department is operating on a month to month basis. And once the unassigned fund balance of 256,000 is utilized, general operating funds will have to supplement the department. the ESSER financial cliff. The fund balance increased in 2020-2021 with the help of ESSER funds. 
However, in September 2022, the ESSER grant, two, grant will end and the district will have to reabsorb four million in positions that were shifted to this funding source. 22 administrative staff and 50 t teaching staff will move back to the general operating fund at the end of the school year. Then in September of 2023, ESSER three funds will end and $2.4 million will be absorbed back to general operating fund. 13 administrative staff, 28 clerical staff, and 28 teaching staff will have to go back. Additionally, the district no longer has the ACE grant. In 2020-2021, a total of $2 million was available for the after school program. As student enrollment decreases, title grant funds also decrease. The loss of ESSER grants will cause fina a financial cliff and administration will have to reorganize personnel and possibly eliminate the additional positions that were created to address learning loss. In summary, the increased cost of health insurance, the loss of CNS revenue, the decrease in grant funding, and the decrease in ADA will cause budgeting challenges in 2022, 2023, and beyond. Tax revenue will also decrease due to the increase of the homestead exemption from 25,000 to 40,000, which is likely to pass in the coming months. And the tax compression rate will also affect revenue as well. Revenue is being impacted from all areas and it is extremely important to safeguard the district's fund balance. We know that COVID has increased the cost of education and that additional resources will be needed to close the learning gap. And as our enrollment continues to decline, it will be challenging to balance the district's budget. And this is, concludes my presentation. If anybody has any questions. Uh, Ms. Mendiola, do we know where this money will be coming from all these changes? Have you figured out a plan? Uh, so basically right now we're looking at our 199 to do the amendment for ADA. Um, however, again, we are projecting 2022, 2023, and so we just have to budget appropriately every year as we prepare our budget uh, for approval you know, for in, in August. Because I know that we have been very frugal as far as spending is concerned. Yes, ma'am. And so that has allowed us to improve on our fund balance. So we need to have that in case of anything happens. So all these changes worries me, and I hope that we take into consideration all of these, all of these <coughs> amendments and, every, and all these numbers because uh, I don't want to go back to what happened in 2018, or I'm sorry, was it uh, 2020? 20, well, how many employees did we lose back then? In 2019, before 2019? I came in? Yes, ma'am. Um, Delia, do you recall? Like I, I don't About remember. 27, I believe it was about 27 employees. Yeah, and that was the lack of not planning properly. I mean, I'll say it, and that's the way it was, and mm -hmm. I don't want to have to go back to that, and I don't want our employees to feel that they're going to be losing their job or, or even feel uneasy, and I think that we just need to be very careful how we spend our money. This is very nerve wracking, I think, for me. And I can imagine what it does to our, to our staff. Mm -hmm. And in talking to them, uh, they do feel very uneasy. So. And again, the purpose of the presentation is to inform our trustees, inform our community where we are financially this year, and then to, again, forecast uh, our finances in the next two years, especially when our ESSER funds are depleted or the ESSER grant has ended, uh, we do need to prepare financially for the next several years to come. Uh, our biggest concern, as you can see from the presentation, is our ADA and our enrollment. And so we really have to um, do, do something to stabilize our enrollment, um, increase our ADA, and then, of course, taxes, collection of taxes, and, and all that that we depend on uh, as our, as our, for our local budget. And I know that we've talked about uh, what are we doing to try to bring back the students or 
and there's been a couple of options and so and I know that the staff is working diligently trying to get our students back so are we keeping up with that are we calling yes. are we searching are we yes ma'am our our attendance um, thank goodness is finally you know stabilizing at 92 percent on average 91 92 percent um, I think the kids as we are going into the spring we're getting better attendance and we're having better attendance uh, in the fall, it was in the 80s, uh, so it has increased. Our truancy officers are working diligently. Our administrators are making the phone calls, social workers, everybody's um, out there just trying to make sure that our kids stay in school until the very end. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, what are the enrollment plans? What are your plans? I mean, continuing. To, I mean, what, what are, is there anything new? Is there anything mm -hmm. different? I know that you had talked a while about, about uh, programs. Uh, yes. Programs in high school, more programs in our schools. In our yes, ma'am. Um, what, what are the changes? What, uh, what are the changes that you've implemented? Okay, and so one of the changes that we, that we did uh, in 2020, 2021, which was last year, we, bought it, we brought in the full day pre-K. We did not have full day pre-K and we were one of the districts uh, that didn't offer it. So we started that uh, my, my second year here. Uh, so we increased our, our program, our pre-K program to full day pre-K, pre-K four. This year, I've already met with our principals, and we are planning a pre-K-3 full-day program as well. So we're hoping to get our three-year-olds and our four-year-olds, um, and so hopefully that increases our enrollment with our, with our pre-K kiddos. Uh, we have also have a full-time GT program. One thing that's also something that we did not have in place, we did not have a GT program uh, with a GT assigned GT teacher at every elementary campus. So we started that also last year as well, um, because I, you know, I was from what I was hearing from the principals and some of the parents is um, our GT program was not strong enough at the elementary. So we incorporated that. Uh, of course, we always look at our CTE programs uh, at the high school, and um, we are looking at the what Miss Winslow started before she left, which was the the programs at the ag farm. Um, we didn't get to first, you know, we didn't get to uh, complete our dog grooming, but I know that she has some other programs that she implemented uh, that we're just kicking off. So the next plan is, and I've already met with Miss Debbie Rabel and Dr. Castillo with our health science program. Right now, the job market, as we know, is in the health science area and in the health industry, so we really do need to increase our programs in health science. Our competitors, uh, our neighboring competitors, uh, they focus on health science, and so a lot of students that wanna go into that program that we don't offer, you know, we're gonna, we may lose them to those, to those neighboring districts, or not even neighboring, it's right here in our own backyard here in Mercedes. Um, so those are some of, the, some, of the, some of the discussions as we try to increase the programs um, that, that we offer. And of course, budgetary wise, we have to have the funds uh, for these programs as well. What are the plans for the, uh, by this slide presentation, enrollment by student groups? Are middle school and elementary? Which yes, ex ex elementary, 73%. Can you give us a plan? Can you provide a plan as to what you're going to do to just focus on the elementary? Well, uh, and again, Right. I agree. I agree. Seventy-three percent at the at the elementary level. Eight hundred and three students that we've lost in five years. So again, um, offering the the pre-K and we we did not get to see the actual counts of the impact when we started the full day pre-K because in 2020, 2021, we were still in COVID. So they weren't sending their little ones, even when we started the transition, uh, when we began the, the slow transition for students to come back to, to uh, campus in person, they still were not bringing their, their little ones. 
So we really have not seen the impact of uh, our full day pre-K program. Um, but again, we, we were hoping that those numbers would help us increase because once the students start with us in pre-K, our goal is to keep them through the elementary. If they're, if they're gonna take them to a full day pre-K program in our neighboring districts, chances are they're gonna stay in that district because they, they want their children to stay with, you know, with the cohort that they've already uh, are comfortable with. So I, I believe that that, I, I believe that that's gonna help us. I also believe that bringing in the three-year-olds because we do have, I believe most of our dist neighboring districts have pre-K three now as well. So I'm hoping that that will increase the numbers as well. So getting the little ones in at that age and keeping them here is, is our goal. Um, and again, I can't, you know, I don't know what the population is as far as in, in the city, but I am looking at a demographic study. I'm looking at the cost of a demographic study to actually find out the age groups of our population in Mercedes to see if we have the younger population with children, school age children that are staying in our community. Because that's also very important is that we have that younger population with uh, children that are in our community. Well, Ms. Miguel, how, may I interject real quick, Ms. Miguel? Really quick, so how can the board help and take care of the situation that we're having at elementary and middle school? Because to, you, you're absolutely, you're spot on, Ms. Miguel. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the actual losses, it's consistent. I mean, I, I have I've seen no change, Ms. Miguel, when you came on board on the ADA. And we've had these discussions, and I'm on the record, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold you accountable. We had these tough discussions. You know, we had a marketing specialist hired. We had discussions about, hey, what are the districts are doing? Okay, why is it they are as an impoverished campuses in Brownsville and they have an A rating? These are the discussions that we have to have, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. And um, how can the board help you, Ms. Mendoza? Because I'm not in the business saying, why is this happening? I know why it's happening. But I want to know how, as a board, get together and ask you because we've been on it. Mm -hmm. We've been on it. I mean, guys, if you look at, um, let's go to the page um, where Mr. Gal brought it up. Um. Page three. The, there's no variance. It's just, it's, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question to you, Ms. Mendoza, how, as a board member, as a team of eight, how can we help you? Because this, to me, it's as a taxpayer, how do I come around and tell the community that says, well, Mr. Hernandez, uh, blah, 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 what, what is it that I can turn around and well, t talk to the taxpayers, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, a lot of us pay thousands of dollars on tax, and we want to know about the return on investment. So again, can you answer that question? Yes, sir, I can. Uh, so the board, basically the board can help by supporting whatever programs we offer at the elementary. If we're gonna increase in our, in our programs, obviously there's gonna be a cost there. Just as we assigned a GT, a full-time GT teacher, obviously that's a full-time personnel that, um, that we have to hire and we have to pay that, that additional salary. So any programs, any new programs that we're gonna be offering, obviously the budget has to be there. So we have to plan accordingly. We have to offer competitive programs Fine arts, we need to increase in our fine arts in our elementaries. Uh, we, you know, it would be nice to have a choir teacher at every elementary, a band teacher at every elementary, uh, and you know, even the, any, any of the arts. And I think that that's where it needs to start. And again, it comes down to budget, it comes down to money. We have to hire the additional personnel, we have to purchase the equipment, um, and, and all of that is, is budgetary planning. So increasing in our programs and the board support with, um, with planning that budget out and the board approving that budget for the additional personnel, uh, for the additional resources, the additional equipment, all of that is gonna take, uh, it's gonna take strategic planning with my team and, and introducing that to the board and getting the board support. Um. 
Uh, page seven, guys, if we look at it real quick on page seven on the general operating fund balance. And I'm going to disagree, Mr. Or, uh, I respectfully disagree. Um, this comes down to uh, leadership, you can tell. And I'm going to give you uh, some kudos, Ms. Mendiola. The strong leadership, strong leadership from the board, the, uh, this, is, uh, this is the truth. Because what we're missing here, um, guys, is uh, the staff, the staffing and uh, the student ratios. But again, I want to put this on the record, Ms. Mendiola, it says, this is outstanding work, and this is outstanding for the team of eight guys. This is strong leadership. Now, going forward, I think we'll do we'll do well. Again, there's going to be some tough decisions, but you know what? Strong leadership, you know, gives us the results we need. Okay, so I'm hoping that the following year we address the issue with the elementary and the middle school ma'am and uh, good leadership. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody questions, comments? Uh, on the uh, team of eight that we had, the, the training that we had, Mr. McShann yes, did correct. mention that the uh, other districts are going through the same thing we are. They're yes, losing students mm -hmm. to the charter schools. Correct. So it's not so much that you're not doing your job, it's that the kids are leaving. So we need to remember what we learned at that training. You know, I, I know that you've been trying to implement programs, you've mm -hmm. been working with your staff, I've spoken to your staff about it, they're excited. But you're right, it takes money and it takes planning. It's not just something that you do overnight. It's something that you plan. And so in talking with the staff, they look forward to next year and all these new programs that are, that are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, our CTE courses, the kids are excited that they're able to participate now because they're all at the high school. So things like that is something that we look forward to. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's easy to say, you know, what's going on, you know, we're losing kids here and we're losing kids uh, at the um, junior high level and the elementary level, which we are, but so are other districts. I don't think it has anything personally to do with you and your staff that they're not doing their job. It's more that it's happening valley-wide. That was told to us in the Team of Eight training. Mm -hmm. And to expect more loss is what they told us. And we all agreed, it's, it's true. I mean, that's, that's, that's what's happening. Yes, ma'am. And so because that's happening, that's where we need to be careful on our budget, on our spending, because we don't know what's going to happen next year. We need to just be very careful and continue and move forward. And we, I've said it before, what can we do as a board to help? I'm constantly on the phone with you, and I'm constantly asking you, Mrs. Mendoza, is there anything that I can do? I mean, you know, I think we all have. I hope we all have. Mm -hmm. And because it's not just about the team of it here, but it's also about doing something in our community, volunteer, and try to get those kids back because it starts with us yes, and it starts with our staff. And the staff needs our support. And if they don't feel supported, they're going to go somewhere else. And if they go somewhere else, guess what? They take their children with them. And we don't need that. So it starts with us and how we treat them. It starts with us and how we work to try to keep our kids here. Who do we call? What do we do? And actually work as a team of eight and just work with you. So that's just my, my input on it. Um, I, again, I don't think it's you. I think it's just a trend that's going on right now, and we just need to work together and just make, try to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And one way is to attract the kids and mm -hmm. talk to the parents. Mr. McShan gave us a lot of examples. Let's do them. Yes, ma'am. You know? And on that note, Mr. Vino, um, I'd like to follow up. And I would like to present uh, to the board in the March meeting, in our regular March meeting, our percentage of loss of students is about 6%, and neighboring districts actually have larger percentages. We're one of the ones that's at 5 6% of a student loss in enrollment uh, in comparison to other districts that, that have lost a larger percentage of, you know, unfortunately, as you mentioned, it is happening uh, statewide, valley-wide for sure. Um, and, you, you know, I can show the comparison from Brownsville all the way to to Zapata, to Laredo, um, there is a dramatic decrease in student enrollment in our public schools, and um, you'll see the increase in the charter schools. So it is, um, it is a, it's an issue that, that my fellow superintendents and I discuss quite frequently. Ms. Mendiola, um, I too, I, I I want you to understand, and I want to make it clear that this is not this is not all on you. That, like Mr. Vino, um, tend to say that 
it's, it's about yeah. you doing the job or not doing a job. This is not at all just all on you. I mean, there's different factors. But um, I want to make sure that, it, that we're very clear that we shift our focus to the elementary Mm -hmm. To that yes, elementary mm -hmm. and middle school, I agree. and and not so much start about our CTE programs and our high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already set. They they've got a good number there. They're coming back. They're set. So the focus should be on middle school and elementary. I agree. We have a marketing specialist that mm -hmm. you just that we, we last year yes. sometime. Um, I'd like to see a return on, of investment on mm -hmm. on that position. And uh, I know we've talked about a video. I know that a video has been put together, but again, it's all on CTE. It's mm -hmm. all on the high school. Mm -hmm. We need middle school exposure. We right. need, you know, we, right. we need that. That's it. That's okay? correct. And, and we need and those programs yes, so that we can highlight, so highlight them. I like for you just to kind of just mm -hmm. present us a, you know, just let's do some brainstorming and find out mm -hmm. what what is going on in other districts. What is it that we, can, right. that we can that we can do. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And yes, like I like I said, when I first came in, that was one of the first things I looked at was the elementary, and one of the first questions that I came in was, why are we not offering full day uh, pre K? Uh, every district, as, right. as far as I knew in the valley, was offering it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of my very first initiatives was the full day pre K program. Um, and again, now, and I proposed to the principals. Uh, let's start with three and four they were hesitant and so i said okay we'll start with four-year-olds year one uh, now going into my third year they're ready we've already had the discussion they're ready for our three-year-olds there is uh, there are requirements state law requires a classroom size to be 800 square feet mm -hmm. and so we're looking at our classroom sizes to see if we meet that requirement um, there is also a requirement of uh, 22 to 1. Dr. Castillo, help me out. What is a, what a 22 to 1? So it, it's an additional teacher, an additional aide as well. Um, and so all of those requirements that we, we've already looked at. And we need to make sure that we are able to afford uh, the additional teacher if needed and that we have the adequate classroom space. I believe it also requires centers so we have to purchase those item for items, uh, those resources for those centers. So everything takes uh, strategic planning, budgeting. Um, you know, I would love to start so many programs at the elementary, but we have to work within our budget, and it's a you know one thing at a time. So again, our focus this year, this coming year, we're already ready to advertise on our billboard. Our marketing specialist has already. Um, come up with the, the billboard that's going to go up, letting everybody know we have open enrollment, and it will be open enrollment for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Uh, we're going to do a backpack, free backpack drive, free t-shirts. We've already designed the t-shirts. Uh, we're going to get out there and market, just like we did for our four-year-old program. Um, again, the, the GT program, very competitive in our neighboring districts. Uh, we did not have that. We did not have a dedicated GT teacher at every elementary. We did that last year. And, um, and again, looking at our, our personnel costs, making sure we can afford it. So now my next goal is to increase in our fine arts. And I have to budget for that. Mm -hmm. And I need to make sure that we have, that we're gonna be able to afford that additional personnel to add uh, some fine arts programs in our elementaries. Um, oh. While back, um, I guess I, I started with the parental committee when you first started. Yes, ma'am. And I would like for you, I would like to ask you to start implementing that program again. It's very, very important to bring our parents into this and and get their feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, not just your administrators, but also your parents. I think Correct. that that group is uh, it's very helpful yes. to you. I, I know I felt like it was. Um, and I did have it. I yeah. I continued it last year yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, this year. I, it's just been, um, you know, I, I'm not going to make excuses. I, there's been a lot of things that have been priority, uh, but I do need to get my parent committee back. I started also last year a teacher committee, uh, and my goal is to continue with the parent committee and start a student committee as well. That's great. Because there is nothing, um, I feel like there's, um, your, your marketing specialist will do 
certain you know billboards mm -hmm. and videos but there's nothing better than a parents getting out there and talking to oh, yes, the other the other parents or mm -hmm family and saying, you know, th this is what they're doing at the high school, this is what they're doing mm -hmm. at the schools, this is what they're part of. And that's, that's free, that right there, that's, you know, right. that's free advertisement right there. It doesn't cost us yes, anything, no. So I, I'd like to um, get For back to on continue, this. yes ma'am. Okay, thank you. I just think it's gonna be a rough couple of years coming mm -hmm. ahead, and we as a board need to work together to ensure that the money is being spent wisely and, and appropriately. Uh, my main concern is my goal when I started running for was to get that A rating for, 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 for the first nice. rating. We went up to a B plus this year. Yes, and we sir. did have a good um, fund balance, so we need to ensure that we keep on adding as much as we can to that fund balance to get that A rating. And by, by getting that A rating, I think we'll get more students coming into the district as well. So we need to work closely as a board and ensure that we're doing the best possible thing we, yeah. we can. Yes, sir. I agree. Mm -hmm. We were... We were the district with the most points gained, 24 points. We went from a 60 to an 84, and uh, we gained the most points than, than any other district in the Valley. And to my so I'm very proud of my CFO uh, and the, the business office and, and all our staff because it was, um, you know, it, it, it takes a team effort. It takes a team effort for that cost savings and keeping an eye on how we spend and spend wisely. And to my understanding, the fund balance plays a vital role in the first rate? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. And you had, you know, and, and yes, we're very proud of that. And kudos to the staff, you know, um, they, they did a great job. But as a board, um, you know, I recall just first coming in and trying to catch up with, you know, everyone else that was here before and, and knowing all the terms. And, but as a board, we've also done, we've also been responsible for some cost savings. And I think as, as that, we can continue to do that. Right. We could be monitoring, we, we should be monitoring our, our expenses um, and, uh, and be as, as helpful as we can to you and to our finance department and to our administration. So, absolutely, thank you. I, I agree, yeah. Ms. Delgado, we should be mindful of our spending, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, what's happening in the districts, and I agree with that, Ms. Madonna and Mr. New. The issue that I'm having is um, the excuses. Um, I don't want to be those districts. You know, I alluded about it in the beginning of our discussion about why is it uh, campuses that are mirrored of uh, our campuses, the socioeconomic background, the special mm -hmm. pops. I, I do a lot of research, I'm a math teacher. And um, if I do not produce, and my students do not pass their star, algebra one, I don't get a contract. I'm held accountable. So to me, it's almost like I'm holding myself accountable because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the losses that we're having. Yes, we, and I agree, Mr. So we have a really healthy fund balance. But if we're losing students, stuff. I'm thinking about, are we producing the best product? Because, like I said, I was alluding about Brownsville, some of the other school districts. They haven't lost that many students. In fact, they've actually gained students. And all you got to do is go to the PEAMS reports. Yes, we can say, oh, because Mr. McChan says that. I don't do that. I do my research. And I says, you know what? We are not going to run away from our, from our, our responsibilities. We don't do that. We need to improve the quality of life for our students so they don't leave. Now, we can go do our political ploys and point here, and is this, and none is that. Guys, we got to actually, uh, and we're providing a good product, but maybe we just got to tweak it just a little bit more so we can entice more students, because we're open enrollment, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So we got to we got to plan correctly. We have a good game, a good team, and I know we do. You know, my kids came to school here. And a lot of your kids came to school here, and very productive kids. So that's that's all I got to say about that. Okay. Yes. Sir. Anybody else comments, questions? Yeah, but one of our responsibilities is also to make sure the district is financially set. So we need to work together. That's right. And as I mentioned, Mr. Hernandez, I will be presenting at our next board meeting 
um, the comparison, the percentage comparisons, because I think we're, we're still doing good in comparison to other districts and as far as the percent of loss of students. So I would like to share that with our trustees and with the community uh, so that we can compare ourselves to, to all of the public schools in the Valley and see where we fall and where they fall. And it's, it, it really is competitive. You know, La Feria wants to take our kids, Westaco wants to, you know, it's, it's competitive out there. And so, um, but again, I will share that actual data from PEAMS um, at, at our next board meeting as well. And I would also like to mention that um, when I first came in, uh, because I agree with you, Mr. Hernandez, wholeheartedly as an educator, as a, as a teacher myself, um, when I came in, you know, I, I saw the scores and uh, I was concerned because there are other campuses, other districts with a similar demographics that are A campuses. So um, I, I chose the middle schools the first year that I was here and I took my two middle school principals to visit um, an A campus, an A middle school with all distinctions. And we met with the principal, we did a complete walkthrough. Uh, it was a campus in La Jolla that is in the Colonias, um, back where you know I used to work and live close to those Colonias. And their, their demographics, actually their, their student population had a higher percentage of eco-dis, had a higher percentage of, of LEP students, higher percentage of, of special education students, but yet they were an A-rated campus. So the message was clear is that if that campus can do it, if that district can do it, so can we. And my principals came back very excited, very motivated, <clears throat> with a lot of ideas, and um, we're implementing those ideas. We are. We just, we, you know, fortunately, we need to recover from this learning loss, but we're going to get there, sir. Yeah. We will get there. Yeah, uh, I was just going to give you kudos, <clears throat> too, about the, the staffing because of the budgeting, and thank you for the finance. I know you had adjusted the ratios and such. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we're, we've been very good with personnel, as you know. Um, again, my first couple of years, we had a hiring freeze. We mm -hmm. were not replacing any positions. Uh, so through attrition, we continued to eliminate positions that were not necessary. We kept a very close eye on our student to staff ratio. And we've, we continue to do that. Uh, my principals know, they ask for a staff if needed, if the numbers show, if the numbers don't show, that the, the need is there, then we will not fill that position and um, we will el eliminate that through attrition. And in fact, we're already going to start, we're already in March, we're going to start looking at master schedules for next year and looking Perfect. at numbers for next year. Right, I appreciate it because, uh, guys, Ms. Mendoza has been on top of that, where even on the... Uh, the core, the algebra, uh, and kudos to you, you're adjusting that. Uh, the current technology classroom, I mean, you don't have any of the teachers that have like three or four students per class, mm -hmm. so you're addressing that. And I appreciate that because how can a teacher have only two or three students in uh, current technology? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some math teachers, science teachers like myself, you know, we'll have our 25, 30. So thank you yes. so much for taking care of that staffing issues. Thank you. Any uh, more questions? Yeah, Comments? one more thing. Ms. Vendiola, on that study, uh, you mentioned that you're going to do yes, some research and, and show the uh, local schools. You know, mm -hmm. you mentioned La Feria, um, other school districts, wanting, you know, taking our students away. Yes. Um, so that, that's great. I'd like to see the competitive, you know, those, mm -hmm. those reports. But I'd like, I would also like for you to uh, find out how. You know, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what is oh, it that, yes. what, are they doing in programs wise? Mm -hmm. or are they doing, I mean, what is it that they're mm -hmm. doing? So, so a little yeah. bit more detail. I, I know their secrets. A little bit more detail. Okay, <laughs> I great. Do. Okay, because I that's do. important. Uh -huh. because, uh, and, and the big one right now is, is fine arts. Fine okay. arts in the, in the elementary. Awesome. I, I, already know, the, I already know the secrets. Yeah. We know, talked about that before. I know the needs. Really, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I know you're a yeah. very yeah. Uh, big Promoting. proponent of fine arts. And we need to start it in our elementaries. Yes, yes. And, and yes, the focus, you know, as you mentioned, increasing in our, in our CT programs, I, I still believe that that's important because yeah. we have South Texas ISD right here in our, in our community and um, they focus on the health professions and, and they'll take our kids. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be competitive yeah. at all levels, yeah. K-12, yeah. Absolutely. K-12. Yeah. No, I, I don't mean, you know, you yes. know, oh, stop, you know, no more programs for that. That's not at all what I'm trying to say, but, but um, let's kind of. Just focus okay. a little bit and, and, uh, and you know, 
Yes, yes, they brainstorm those ideas, share it with us as to what they're doing, and mm -hmm. uh, be surprised. You know. Yes, it's, and, it's and we're doing. Things. We're 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 competing with them, like I said, and yeah. but I have a budget that I have to stay within, and mm -hmm. so little by little we'll okay. get there. Step by step. Thank you. Need more comments, questions, guys? Mr. Help. Okay. Got it. Okay, uh, moving along. The discussion of district facility projects timeline plan of action. Ms. Mignola. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have Mr. Herrera uh, who will be presenting and then we will also have our CNS director, Melissa Garza, and uh, Mr. Handy as well. Good evening, Superintendent, Ms. Mendiola, Board President, Mr. Hernandez, Trustees. Uh, this is a facilities uh, update on, on, on the current progress. Um, we had a facilities walkthrough. A uh, special board meeting was held on February 26, 2022. Trustees, superintendent, and maintenance director conducted a walkthrough of the following buildings, uh, which was the current administration building and culinary arts center, uh, the old Grand Building, the old Mecca campus, previous administration, human resources, and curriculum offices, uh, high school Mecca, G-Wing, and the portable, and also last, uh, the Mercedes Academic Academy. Based on the walkthroughs, plans will begin for facility improvement and relocation. Part of the uh, walkthrough, uh, we also discussed uh, some, some concerns uh, with, the, with the buildings, and because of that, uh, we are doing our roof assessment proposal is under review and pending approval. Uh, proposed roof assessments are for the following buildings. Uh, at the high school, we have the E and the G wing. Uh, at the high school, we also have some concerns with the old gym uh, roof. Uh, the current administration building, which we're at, uh, Sergeant Check One Middle School Gym. Uh, the 2021-22 the 20, 20, disaster funding budget for roof repairs is six, 736000 uh, The good news is uh, next year we'll be receiving additional funding under the disaster um, initiative uh, the state um, um, passed. Uh, projects will be prioritized within a uh, limited budget. Campus, uh, campuses will be uh, first priority. Uh, and just to give you a, a brief summary of how and, and the steps that we'll be taking in these roof repair, uh, step one, engineering firm will conduct roof assessments. Upon completion, a scope of work is provided for each anticipated project. Uh, step two, MISD, Mercedes ISD, will prioritize projects and go out for requests, RPs, which are requests for proposals. Uh, once we select the approved contractor, uh, the contractor will make the repairs and the engineering firm will oversee and inspect all work and warranties uh, so that we make sure that the work that was conducted uh, is in compliance and they actually did what they were supposed to. Uh, estimates have been requested for the following, removal of the culinary equipment from its current location, uh, request for proposals for building assessments, uh, these building assessments will inc include air quality test, roof assessment status, uh, building mechanical status. Uh, three of these buildings will be, that will be um, assessed uh, will be the previous HR building, uh, previous curriculum building, and previous central office. Uh, Mr. Adetta, we also need to include this building as well. The, uh, the, the, current, the current administration building, I'm sorry. Okay, will do. Uh, the, the planning stages for department relocation. Uh, first, we need to verify numbers and staff in each department. Uh, we need to take inventory of all building and office uh, current uh, status, cabinets, desks, shelving. Uh, the reason behind that is because when we make the actual relocation to this building, we remove cabinets and desks from where they were at. So now we have to plan to move all that back, uh, and so we just need to make sure exactly what we're, in, we're gonna encounter. Uh, we'll have to coordinate with technology department on internet access and internet uh, needs, uh, just because when we locate the staff, we need to make sure that the internet drops are still in place, uh, and then we need additional drops uh, where they're gonna be located, uh, that'll have to be you know communicated with the technology department. Uh, proposed staff relocation based on occupancy and, and department needs, uh, along with the numbers, we also have to make sure if there's enough room for storage for their, uh, pay, uh, their documents, uh, their equipment. Uh, and so when we make that move, we need to take all those things into consideration. 
Uh, we'll communicate with city of Mercedes inspectors on facility upgrades that may be required. Uh, and this is just communication with them just to make sure that everything is in place and we're in full compliance uh, with the occupancy of the, of the new buildings, uh, if they have been vacant. Uh, we'll have to create a timeline for relocation based on the school calendar. Uh, the best thing here is to start moving departments as soon as possible so that we don't get bombarded over the summer. Uh, and so the, the buildings that are available will have to already start making suggestions uh, as to the timeline uh, that we'll have to start relocating them. Are uh, the buildings uh, ready right now for people to move into, for staff to move We into? have um, the OHR building. Uh, it's, it's currently being used for COVID testing, uh, but that's an outside organization uh, that uh, the district partnered with. So. You know, we would have to make the district would have to make a recommendation as to continue or not continue, uh, in order for us to start moving staff uh, to those to those buildings. Uh, curriculum as well, uh, it is being used by the textbook department. Uh, you know, that's another area that we may have to relocate so we can already start moving staff into the old curriculum building. But those decisions will be finalized by our superintendent, and uh, uh, and for final, you know, a, fi a final recommendation. And then uh, the old administration building is currently our food pantry and uh, clothing closet. So, so do we'll we know where, if we start moving, where, they like for will example, go. do we know if we keep the COVID site open, where is that going to move to? If the food pantry, if it's at the old central office, do we know where they're going to go to yet? No, do we have a plan about, you know, any kind of plan at all? Not, not at this time. I would need to see. I would need to get with um, that department and see. And again, first I need to know where our staff is going to move into. And if there's sufficient space in other buildings, uh, then perhaps we can keep the food pantry where they're at. So that is, that's going to be the next step. Um, of course, the biggest step is the budget. So we will need to look at, um, for example, we're still, and CNS, I, I don't want to steal her thunder, she's going to talk right now, but um, we need to look at numbers first and get a complete cost analysis of, of the move of what it's going to cost us to move over, and um, I need to create a budget for that. Once the budget is created, then um, physically we will, we will begin the move. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Herrera, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, you mentioned the COVID, uh, the, where they're doing the testing right now. Um, I mean, really, that's not a building that's occupied by staff, uh, full, like a full staff. You, they just drive up, they take the testing, and that's it. So there's no one, there's no one's occupying that building. So it's Correct. not a matter of having to move somebody from there and sh do all this shuffle, shuffling, right? I mean, there's no one there. There's, except for nurses that are doing, keeping records or, you know. Yes, ma'am. Because I've, um, I've gone by, I've, I've driven by there before to take a test and uh, so they're, they're, you know, so it's pretty much vacant, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, is the portables also considered to be a moving location for some of the staff? The new portable at the... Well, once, once say, yes, yes, once, you know. The one at the high school or the one at, there at, at the... the high the... school. Are all of the, are all of the buildings occupied? Or the classrooms, actually. The portable at the high school? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, it's currently being used, so we'd yeah. be able to make that move until the last day of school. Until, yeah. The last day of school. Okay. Once we vacate that, we can move other staff in. But that'd be a, a recommendation that the superintendent no. would, yeah. <laughs> would no, make. No, I understand. Yeah. Yes. yeah. No, I understand. So, and, so. and physically, we would probably want to leave the building there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and just yes. because of the cost to move it. That was my next again. question. Yes. yes. Great. It is. So that can be utilized as well. We, we hope to be able to move staff uh, into that portable without having to relocate the portable itself. Awesome. Okay. Good. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, requested estimates needed and, and funding sources will be used and assured um, that we have appeal in place. Uh, for example, what, what I mean by that is that if we have to move this uh, equ culinary equipment on the last day of school, we want to already have appeal in place with the company. Uh, or the contractor that's going to come in. Everything has to be scheduled so that we can make it as smooth transition as possible. Uh, and so those things will be in place uh, just, uh, just so that we can move forward and, and, and it's easier on, on the relocation. Uh, we'll identify scheduled maintenance staff needed to assist with the moving, uh, along with our, some staff being out for summer, 
A lot of our staff is also out as well. Uh, they take vacation time, uh, two weeks. So even though we have a full staff in place, it's sometimes half. Uh, so the, the move will have to, and the relocation will have to be really coordinated just so that we make sure we have the right manpower uh, to make that move. But uh, you know, we'll work with it once, once we get there. Another uh, update uh, that we have is in our uh, heating, uh, ventilation, and air conditioning, which is our HVAC. We're continuing with rooftop unit replacements uh, and HVAC-related upgrades, such as controls at the different campuses. Um, classrooms are priority, of course, uh, and so we're focusing on, on replacing those uh, rooftop units. Uh, Sergeant Harrell Middle School chiller replacing will cost 133000 We have two chillers at Harrell, one needs to be replaced. Uh, once the old one is removed, we'll use it at spare parts for the other one that we have there. So nothing will go to waste. It's, uh, and once when we're considering all these estimates and who's gonna conduct the work uh, for the district, uh, we look at the type of equipment, um, the refrigerant type, uh, of course the cost, the warranties, and and um, and and just the type of service that these companies uh, uh, you know provide. Uh, we're going straight to manufacturers. We're not dealing with any second or third parties uh, for these uh, improvements. Mercedes High School Chiller. Uh, we have or we're, we have one more estimate to review. Uh, that estimate will replace one chiller, one tower. Uh, that is those that chiller uh, system there. Uh, provides uh, AC for about 60 to 70 percent of that campus. So we need to make sure uh, this is the time we have the funding. Uh, we need to make that improvement uh, and um, to make sure that, you know, we don't have any future future issues uh, with that AC. That, that uh, chiller has been there probably since I was in school. It's old um, and the best option there is to replace it. The budget for the air quality improvements is approximately $1.1 million that was allocated. Uh, ne uh, up next is uh, Child Nutrition. Good evening, Superintendent, Mrs. Mignola, and members of the board. This next slide provides a brief update on the actions that the Child Nutrition Department is taking to prepare the new cafeteria site for the students enrolled in the Mercedes Early College Academy. The Child Nutrition Department is currently in the process of soliciting three quotes for the equipment needed for the new cafeteria site. We are working closely with the business office for the budgeting process. Uh, once the quotes are received from vendors, all quotes exceeding $5,000 will require approval by the Texas Department of Agriculture. If approved, the TDA, uh, sorry, TDA will verify all purchases uh, during the next uh, district's administrative review. And that's it for me. Any questions? And Ms. Garza, you don't, um, the estimate that you gave us, the projected estimate, um, that is not currently in your budget. That is correct. No, it's not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I have a quick question, Mr. Medo. The uh, equipment that we we saw at the Graham uh, <clears throat> the Graham uh, campus mm -hmm. and the uh, in the kitchen are we going to reuse those? Miss Scarza, um, I'm sorry. The kitchen equipment that is currently at the Graham, uh, where the Graham cafeteria that Mecca was using. Can you give us the status of that equipment? Is any of it reusable? Or? Some of it is. The majority of it isn't uh, due to rust, um, the rust that has accumulated over time. Oh. But, but some of it is. Okay. So we'll take that into consideration. Correct. Okay. So, Ms. Mignola, what happened to the previous equipment? I think we had the discussion before. Melissa, you may not. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's, sorry. Let's just stay up here till, because I, I, that happened before my time, so. What was your question, sir? My question is what happened to, and I know it's before your time, uh -huh. what happened to the equipment that was there? Before the culinary was um, constructed, do you know what happened to the equipment? That equipment was also sold to the culinary arts um, program. Okay. None of it was removed as far as you know or, or whatever? Some of it might have been okay. salvaged, but I'm not, I'm not too okay. sure. Okay. okay. I, would have to, I would have to investigate and find out. Okay. Thank you. We need to get some breakfast. Yeah. 
Any other questions? Okay, we will do some research on that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, board. Uh, our goal uh, in, in this building is to ensure that it's ready for our entering uh, Mecca students. So with that in mind, we, we performed a walkthrough with uh, Sterling Networks and Telepro communication staff. Uh, what we're doing is we're reviewing all, all of the network hardware uh, and, and communications equipment here at this campus, at, at this building. Uh, if, you, if you remember, it's, it's been many years since, uh, since students have been here. Mm -hmm. So equipment was moved out move back in, temporarily move back out, and so we've had a kind of a jumble of equipment. Uh, much of the equipment is older. It is older equipment. It, it would need to be replaced. Uh, we also looked at, at the cabling and the fiber. Um, some of that will need to be replaced. The fiber runs will need to be replaced. Um, we looked at the Wi-Fi, so we're creating a, a hotspot or a Wi-Fi heat map. Uh, back when this was a campus, we had one access point per wing, and now our campuses have typically one per classroom. So a lot has changed in that time. So that's, that's another uh, part of the network that we would have to really beef up. Um, no cameras were here, no, were in place when this was MEC, so another area that we, we would have to look at and, and implement a camera system. Um, and, and we're continuing to work with the, with the consultant and the cablers to make sure that we were able to provide a, an accurate cost estimate. Um, did the did the um, company already come in to do the? We did. We yes. uh, we performed it Friday. Okay. And and we've had a, a short follow up as well, but Friday okay. was our, our main day. And they'll be providing us with um, an yes, estimated cost. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Handy? I'm going to ask Mr. Handy a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Handy, on the technology, uh, is any of this going to be um, offset with uh, the E rate? Federal grant. So we did apply for E-rate uh, for the upcoming round. Um, for this campus, we, we did not. It, it's a long-term uh, planning project when, when we do E-rate, and we, we did not know that this, would, this campus was going to be, or this building was going to be reused as a campus. Okay. So I guess in short, no. However, there is some other equipment that we might be able to move in okay. to offset a small amount of the cost. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Okay. Any questions, guys? Comments? Okay, uh, see, adjournment 717. This concludes our workshop. Moving along to the special board meeting. You guys want to take a break real quick or no? Good to go? Let's keep going. Mr. Garza? Go. And keep going? Okay. It's 7-18, Wednesday, uh, March 9th, the call to order of the Mercedes Independent School District Board of Trustees Special Board Meeting. Um, we have a quorum, uh, myself, Mr. Martinez, Ms. Delgado, Mr. Vigno, Mr. Garza, and Mr. Howe, and of course, Ms. Mendiola. Um, let's go on the Pledge of Allegiance by Trustee Mr. Howe and Invocation by Trustee Mr. Acosta. Please bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask you for guidance and wisdom in these very difficult times. Please give us the fortitude and the right mindset that we will make the right decision, not only for our students, but for our staff. We ask all this through your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, open forum, public count. Okay, um, moving along to A, superintendent. 
One, discussion, possible action to approve uh, Robert Kirchner Services Agreement. Ms. Mendela. Uh, Mr. Chairman, administration is recommending approval of the Robert Kirchner Services Agreement. Uh, this is for engineering services. Okay, guys, so I'd like to entertain uh, a motion. We have a recommendation from the superintendent. So, so moved. moved. I have a motion from Mr. Nino, second from Mr. Garza. Any discussion, guys? No. Mr. Howell? Yes, okay, so uh, we have a motion from Mr. Nino, a second from Mr. Garza. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? No. Motion passes. Moving along to uh, executive session. If and during the course of this meeting, discussion of any item on the agenda should be held in closed meeting, the board will conduct a closed meeting in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551, Subchapters D and E. The board may consult with the legal counsel on a matter discussed in executive session pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. A. Personnel, pursuant to Section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code, and attorney consultation pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. One, resignations, terminations, appointments, evaluation, reassignments, duties, and discipline of professional, paraprofessional, and non-contract employees. Teacher substitutes and substitutes for maintenance, transportation, and cafeteria department. B, discussion in private consultation with attorney regarding pending or contemplated litigation, settlement matters, and or matters where the personnel, professional duty under the state board requires private consultation with the school attorney. It is 721 and we are in executive session. You all right? What kind of, what kind of paper?